Now, we are on the 1st of October. And as you can see, we are ninth in the Premier League. And that is quite an achievement when you consider where we were maybe at the midpoint of last season. Now, we only have seven points, as you can see. And we are now going to have a little look at how we got to that point. And in fact, I'll just have a little look on the transfers before we do that. Before I show you the fixtures, I just want to show you the signings I was able to make after our last episode. Uh, if there were any at all, in fact, I'm just going to have a little look. I don't think we made any. No, in fact, uh, there's a few more loan signings. Going out, but we didn't, in fact, make any more signings. I am looking at a few players to bring in possibly in January, maybe at the end of the year. But I'm saving a little bit of money so I can scout youngsters from other clubs to try and bring them in on the cheap, hopefully. Well, that's the plan anyway. We shall have to wait and see if that's possible uh, because of work permits and other things along those lines. Right, we will go back to the fixtures now because that's what you really want to see. It's all very well saying we were ninth in the Premier League with seven points, but how do we get to that point? Now then, the last episode was recorded on the day of this game. And I was really disappointed with how this one went, as you'll see from the stats as well as... I mean, look at this. 21 shots, 8 on target against a team like Everton on the first day of the season at home. It was our chance to get a real big win under our belt. Or not even a big win, just a win on the first day against a decent side. And we were better than them. We were better than them. And they got a couple of goals. But as you will see now, we got the best one. And that's kind of what matters to me. The goal that we scored in this game is actually one of the better ones I've actually seen um, on this save. Probably the best goal I've seen a score on this save so far. So when this thing finally bloody loads, you'll get a chance to see the goal. Scott Parker, goal scorer for us, but he got his chance here as this. Well, not this, but when you see his goal. Um, Everton started off the play. We actually won the ball and we're on the break. Um, let me just make sure I actually do have this on key highlights and not just extended or something along those lines no we do have it on key right okay Everton won the ball back off of us and Lukaku broke the defense but then lost the ball unfortunately a defensive mix-up enabled Everton to win the ball back again and it just kind of got a bit scrappy until eventually Barkley was able to slide it through and Lukaku put it into an empty net and it's a shame because at this point we were dominating you can see that Everton actually have more clear-cut chances um, so maybe they did deserve it on that basis, but it's sometimes hard to guess what the game determines to be clear-cut. Oviedo's free kick was brilliant. I can't deny that. It was a great free kick from Oviedo, but I just felt that we should have got something out of this game. We did get this, though, and this is a great goal. Scott Parker, take a bow. Hopefully this won't bugger it up. Barisha, who had brought on as a substitute, uh, manages to get the ball back to Tunnicliffe, who then goes back to Yulesgar, but it's the way this is headed down eventually it's another one of these ridiculously long highlights Effie Ambrose now back to Dan Byrne I do hate it when football manager does this right okay here we go Yules Gord pull, pulls it back Tunnicliffe ball in Parker bang volley from the edge of the area and he wasn't even that close to the edge of the area that was a stunning effort and the more goals we score like that the better frankly because that was absurdly good unfortunately we need to start putting away some of the uh easier chances if we're intending to actually stay up this year and that is our aim after all um now we'll go on to the wigging game and i was again a little bit disappointed in this one uh we came up with wigging so i was kind of hoping that we could go to wigging and get a point at least however the problem with this is even last season we can beat us home and away from what i remember plus we got beaten by them even after we changed to this new system that they were dominant and they just seem to have our number and I'm not quite sure how we can fix that, uh, which is a shame. But we will show you the highlights. I mean, they were better than us on the day. As you can see, we did have a little bit more possession, but I don't know quite know how it matches up in terms of clear-cut chances. But we should have a look. Uh, there's five goals in this game, so I apologise that this one might be a little bit lengthy. But you're going to want to see the goals that we score because, once again, Alexander Gorgon has popped up with two for us. And that's saying something because he's not exactly a big goal scorer. Both of his goals, I think, were excellent. As Wigan's first goal was as a direct result of... We just couldn't seem to clear the ball. Um, it was one of our problems that we have kind of suffered with a few times this season already, is our failure to clear the ball. We lose it in awkward positions. And this better not be another ridiculously long highlight, because that would be annoying. Uh, Larson also did get injured in this game, which is very annoying, because I bought him in to play instead of Adil Chihi, who constantly gets injured, and now it looks like he's going to have to play anyway. 
Uh, this is a shame because it was just one of those ones where he's so close to the goalkeeper that nothing he can do will make any difference. And that's a shame. And Anderson plays for Wigan now. I just noticed that. That's a strange one. And then the second one, we play the ball around nicely and it comes back to Gorgon here. What a strike. Not quite as far out as Scott Parker's goal, but verging on it. And more goals like that would be brilliant. But if we can maybe start scoring from a little bit closer in on a regular basis, that would be better. Unfortunately, the problem we had in this game was that every time we scored and got ourselves back level and looked like we were going to push on, we immediately let Wigan go and score again. It's these passes into the midfield where we just seem to throw the ball away all the time. And it was never a good idea of ours. Um, we lose the ball way too much in the midfield. And which is strange because we've got some good holding ball winning midfielders. This was poor as well from Jules scored. He didn't track his man and then I don't know what Kirali's doing there. Poor. Very, very poor. The goals we conceded in this game were poor. There's no denying that. And that's a great shame. Our second goal was a little bit similar. Parker brings it down. Gorgon, bang. Again, we just seem to be scoring those same types of goals. A lot of goals from set pieces or as a direct result of set pieces, which is a little bit surprising, but Jules God has got some good delivery on him, so maybe it's not so surprising. If we could just keep them out of the other end, things might be a little bit better. The final goal, a little bit disappointing again. Holt just broke the back line and, well, no, okay, apologies. I pretty certain that Grant Holt gets the goal. I just forgot that that was not the goal. Um, we've still got to see we can put themselves straight back in front again. This was very, very soon after they'd gone and conceded the equaliser. Just a ball whipped in and Grant Holt, header. <sighs> it's annoying. And after this game, I'm thinking, well, we've been two games into the season. We've already dropped all points that we had up for grabs and they were winnable games. Certainly if you look at the stats in the Everton game and obviously we're going to decide we came up with so we should be at least competing and I guess we were. We didn't lose by huge amounts in them, so that's the key. Um, next game we had in the Cup was against Bristol City, and this is a strange one. I'm not actually going to show you the highlights of it because we don't want to make this video go on forever, but we scored through catching Nicklich and then immediately were conceding a goal through Dexter Blackstock. It was a strange one because they clearly weren't involved in the game very much. I only had four shots, two on target, and Dexter Blackstock was one of those goals. It was just one of those strange ones where you lose concentration after you score, and then they scored. The weird thing about this game is that there was two minutes of stoppage time and I thought when the highlight showed, you know how it is when you've got it on key highlights, when you it breaks to a highlight that's like 10 seconds from the end of the game and you think, all right, fine, that's it. We've, we've drawn one all and we're going to have to go to extra time. No, Freddie Plumain breaks through, scores a great goal and wins the game for us. Then somehow there ended up being like three minutes more injury time on top of that, during which Rodiego was able to make it 3-1. After we caught them on the right, they did throw literally every player forward, so I can understand possibly why that happened. Back in the league, and that's important because we needed to get to the fifth round, uh, fourth round of the League Cup this year to meet our minimum objectives. Um, and that is key for us because I don't want to piss the board off. Uh, we're actually expected to get the fourth round of the FA Cup too, which shouldn't be too difficult provided we get a favourable draw in the third round. But that isn't until January, so we'll have to wait for that. Next game, huge, huge game against QPR. This was massive for us. We, again, as you can see, we suffered from the same problem. Score, immediately concede. We weren't exactly dominant against QPR, but I still felt that we were the better side. We were the home team and most of their chances came in the second half where they were sort of pushing for it a little bit more um, after we'd gone back in front through Scott Parker. Now, it's good to see Costas Petroglu get his first ever goal for Fulham and he's according to this day, but it's been in the club for like 18 months now. And this was actually his first ever league goal for Fulham. So it's a it's a big moment. And it was a strange one because it was just a mistake at the back from QPR. And Matrogli pounced on it. And that's the kind of predatory finishing that we need to see from him this season. And I think he could be, provided he doesn't get injured, important. Fortunately, they scored from a corner. Um, just one of those irritating goals, but it happens. And I thought, maybe they're going to turn it around on us and we'll have even more problems. No, it was not to be. Uh, Scott Parker, who seems to be just on a goal-scoring binge lately, uh, stepped up again. Gorgon played, got it out of the wing and he just put it in a perfect position for Parker to finish from close range. Certainly wasn't of the same quality of his original goal uh, in the first game, but who cares? It was the winner. And that, for me, is much more important as we got our first win of the season. Our first Premier League win since we were relegated, of course. I, why is he taking us back to there? 
Let's just go back. Right, yeah, then we had a game that I really wasn't expecting to get anything from, uh, which was away at Newcastle. I figured if we could get a point here, then that'd be good. But Newcastle were actually struggling. They'd lost all three of their Premier League games so far this season. And uh, we just sort of pounced on it. They were probably they probably deserved to at least get a point from this game. But it was not to be. And as you can see, our little goal-scoring hero from last season, Thomas Draga, has stepped up and been the hero yet again for us. And I'm hoping that continues for this season because with Ruiz's work permit problems, with having to play Draga in every single game now, not that that was a problem for him last year, I just wondered if he'd be able to make the step up. Now, we're playing in our sort of changed blue kit here, but this was a brilliant goal. Draga just gets put straight through by Matroglu here and he makes no mistake about the finish. A wonderful chip. And you just think, where does this lad get that kind of confidence from? But if he can keep doing it, then all power to him. Now... With us being away from home and against Newcastle, I did expect a bit of an onslaught from them. And we kind of got that, but not really to the extent I was expecting. Uh, De Jong was through here, and then unfortunately, straight over the top, and Ayosi Perez, who I've actually got my eye on too, because he's got a lot of potential, according to one of my scouts, um, popped up with the goal for Newcastle. Great finish. I think it actually won goal of the month. Draga then, from the penalty spot, made it 2-1 to us, and we managed to hold on. I just put the bus in front of the goal after that to make sure that we got the win and that was six points well not six points from six but what does it keep taking oh i know why hmm <laughs> because i'm not pressing back i'm pressing leave match then we went to west brom and west brom have had a flying start to the season so far they are really really high in the league and this only helped them push that even further um this is one of those games that you get from time to time where I, i'm not going to show the highlights because it will take too long because there's a lot of stuff that happened in this game Dan Byrne managed to score himself, not one, but two own goals. Two. I mean, look at that. We were definitely the better side. We had more shots, and we were very accurate with the shooting. But Trogler managed to score twice for us, which is good, showing he's just getting involved in this kind of stuff. Unfortunately, Yule's Gord was actually sent off in this game, although the second one was just a bit of nothing. It's just one of those ones where you can't even see why the referee's given it, but he has, and he's gone off, which is a pain because now he's suspended for a game, and that is something we do not need. But Dan Burr managed to score two own goals. Uh, the first one was from a corner, and it just deflected in off of him. I guess he couldn't really do much about it, but the second one was just a shot that just hit him in the face and went in. Um, very unlucky day for him, and he somehow managed to get a six point for a rating despite putting in his own net twice. That's impressive. That couple with Craig Dawson's goal at West Brom were home and dry basically before we got back into the game late on but we couldn't do it which is a shame because I really felt we did quite well there too you'll see West Brom's elevated league position in a minute when I show you the full table although you may have already seen it on the other screen we next had Wolves in the Capital One Cup which is a game I've literally not no sorry no I feel like I've literally just played it because I kind of have but we've also had the Blackburn game in between which was such a dull game that I completely forgot it even happened Wolves was an interesting one as well um, thankfully, because of weird English rules, Yulesgold was able to serve his suspension for the red card in the Premier League in this game, which means he's not actually missed any Premier League fixtures, which is a godsend, uh, because I would have rested him anyway for this one. Another really strange result, in that we actually had to come from behind here as Chris Martin put Wolves in front. I think he used to play for Derby County, but then a Thomas Draga penalty for us managed to level things up in the second half as I was starting to get a little bit worried that we might lose here at a championship side we did have a slightly weakened team out but even so I just want to take this opportunity to show you Thomas Traga's picture yes that is what he actually looks like sort of the gawpy teenager kind of thing with a sort of a Morton Gamps Pedersen style haircut but to be honest if he can put goals in at the rate he is then great he does seem to be declining quite a lot in his attributes here which is strange because they were all green a couple of weeks ago um I may need to look into that but the real hero tonight was Adil Chihi. I brought him on as a substitute. Um, phew, in fact, will it even say? No, it won't say when he came on. Um, but, oh no, he wasn't a substitute. He did actually start the game, didn't he? Yeah, sorry. I'm so used to having him on the bench that I forgot that he started this game. We actually had Draga Gorgon and Matroglu on the bench. Um, but Chihi stepped up and scored two goals in quick succession for us. I think both of them were actually headers, which is very strange for a winger. But he did it. And we got the deserved win. And that's us through to the fourth round of the League Cup, which is where we needed to be. Uh, we next had a game against Blackburn and we managed to get a nil-nil draw. I say managed because we should have won. Blackburn were also down to 10 men and they had a man sent off. I think it was Grant Hanley or someone like that was sent off in like the 57th minute. No, it was Liam Moore. 59th minute. And well, if anything, they had more chances. It's a shame. We really should have pounced on that opportunity. And we also managed to get ourselves five bookings. So we've got to be careful because we will start racking those bookings up. 
Um, something that's worth noting is that Brian Ruiz played in this game, as you can see. Now, this is because there was an international break and Ruiz was recalled to the Costa Rica squad. I'm guessing he put in some good performances for our under-21s or something along those lines. And thank God for that, because that means that he's got his work permit back, um, which means he can now play for us. So that's useful. I'm still intending to start Thomas Draga in that position, but if the situation persists where Draga has to play on the left or right due to injuries, or we just need to give him a rest, but Ruiz will play, because Ruiz is getting a bit old. Um, well, he's not that old, but his ability is about the same as Draga's currently now. He's declining, whereas Draga is improving. Draga has a lot of potential, and I want to see him realise that, because I think he could genuinely be a very good player if he can carry on playing the way he is. Right, let's have a look at the stats. This video is probably dragging on a little bit too much. Let's just have a little look at the stats for the season. There's not a lot to show you, really. Um, quite a few players have played in every single game. Top scorer is Mitroglou. Top assister is Mitroglou as well, uh, which is good to see him creating goals. Parker also has two of them. Most player of the match awards got to Scott Parker. He's had a great, great start to the season. His pass completion is absolutely brilliant, although... Yeah, six games, 86% pass completion. That is a brilliant record so far. It's only after six games. If he can keep that up, then my God, he's going to have a hell of a season. And I think he has one more year left in his contract. I might try and keep him even longer if he doesn't decline too much. Average rating, well, that should be Parker without a doubt. Although Gorgon has also had a good start to the season, along with Metroglou and Stecklenburg. He's made some good saves for us in important games. None of the others have managed to top seven. Drago's been a little bit slow for rating, although he has had that great game against Newcastle. One player I'm a little bit disappointed in is Jules Gord. He's not really hit the ground running quite yet in the Premier League, but I'm hoping he can pick that up. Right, let's go look at the league table. Man City top with Man United and Everton. And as you can see, West Brom not far behind that. Now, one of the bonuses about, we may have lost three games, but we only have a minus one goal difference. And when you compare that to teams like Burnley... It certainly puts us in a good position. We've not managed to lose a game by more than one goal yet, and that is huge. Now, we do have Manchester City next at home, and with the run they're on, we could well lose that by quite a few goals. So I'm glad we've got a good goal difference, at least for now, and hopefully we can keep the damage to a, a minimum in that game. But we will really have to see. Um, now then, let's see where we are going to be rejoining, since we've had quite a lot of episodes here. Now, next month looks a little bit thin, so it'll probably be quite a short one. We've literally just got City, West Ham, Liverpool, and then City again in the Capital One Cup, so we are not going to get through that. But we're going to give it our best shot, and that's all we can really hope for. Uh, if you like what you've seen, hit the like button. If you'd like to even more than that, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, bye-bye.